Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us for this educational night about health insurance open enrollment eight. We really thank you guys for being here this evening, and we hope that this evening will be helpful to you all as you look at your health insurance options for this year. I'll just explain to you what's going to happen this evening. In a few minutes, you're going to hear a presentation from Calista Kennedy, who is the program manager for enrollments here in King County. We will be entertaining questions. Um, we will also be videotaping this, recording this session to be put on our website. And we're also going to be putting it on Facebook Live. After the presentation and your questions, we will have certified navigators who are available to help you with enrollments and to look at any additional options um, for open enrollment eight. If you have any questions, please let us know. Please do not hesitate to ask any questions. So what I'm going to do now, I'm gonna turn it over to Calista Kennedy for the presentation. And thank you so much um, for being here this evening. Yes, good evening, everyone. I'm going to share my screen and get started with this evening's presentation. Okay, so um, know your options. So what we're going to cover here tonight is the options available through the Washington Health Plan Finder for open enrollment eight, um, which is coverage that will start um, at the earliest January 1st of 2021. Um, the state of Washington has some um, additional carriers this year um, in the exchange. We also have the new Cascade Care plans that have rolled out. Um, so we're going to cover all that information tonight. Um, and any questions you may have, the chat is available, um, as well as um, just asking the questions um, that you may have along the way. So know your options. So health insurance enrollments, King County, um, we are public health access and outreach. We're the lead organization for King County. We work with the community, with partner agencies to help people enroll in health insurance and to reduce our uninsured, uninsured rates in King County. Um, all of our staff are certified navigators through the Washington Health Benefit Exchange, and we provide enrollment assistance, education to individuals about their health insurance um, when applying through the Washington Health Plan Finder. Enrollment assistance, that said enrollment assistance is available statewide. Um, and this is just a breakdown, um, whether it's virtual or in person, um, there are navigators ready to help folks enroll. Um, we at King County uh, Access and Outreach are again the lead for King County, but we do not turn anyone away. Um, we also are the lead for Kitsap and Clallam County starting this year. Um, so we will really provide assistance to anyone who seeks out help from us here at King County Access and Outreach. Um, there are also certified brokers available to folks in case you need possibly that deeper dive um, with someone who can go through possible recommendations for what plans might be best to your family. The Health Benefit Exchange also operates um, and supports 11 enrollment centers located throughout the state. Um, and some of them are actually co-staffed by both brokers and navigators. Um, our storefront here in King County is located in Federal Way um, in the plaza across the street from the Commons Mall. We operate that storefront um, with our navigator staff. Um, and again, to connect with an assister, you can contact us and you can also find them on the Washington Health Plan Finder website. Um, under um, get virtual help um, and also in the customer support tab you will see get help from a navigator. So what types of insurance is available through the Washington Health Plan Finder? The Health Plan Finder helps you seek out two options. The first is the Washington Apple Health Program, that's the state Medicaid program, um, and they you can see um, programs are eligible, eligibility is determined by income, um, you can apply for coverage for the adult program, children's medical, pregnancy, ailing and emergency medical, um, and certain age blind and disabled individuals can also apply, but generally they apply through uh, DSHS. Um, but Apple Health encompasses all of those, um, and you can apply through the Health Plan Finder um, for that. Um, folks who are over income for Apple Health, um, in most cases, 
um, they can enroll into a qualified health plan, which is the other type of insurance offered through the Washington Health Plan Finder. Um, these are private companies certified by the state insurance commissioner. Um, they meet all of the requirements from the Affordable Care Act. Um, they uh, do not have pre-existing limitations, so you can have a pre-existing condition and not be turned away. Uh, clients have to pay a monthly premium, co-insurance, or co-pays for services and meet an annual deductible. Tax credit assistance is available in most cases to help clients reduce their monthly premiums. Most clients who apply through the Health Plan Finder, um, somewhere around 75 to 80% do get a tax credit to help lower their premium when they apply through the Health Plan Finder. We're gonna to touch on Apple Health here for, for a moment. Um, and then go on to focus on those qualified health plans. Um, our Apple Health, the three main programs through the Health Plan Finder are the adult program, pregnancy, medical, and children's Apple Health. Um, the adult program was rolled out when the ACA came into effect it's for individuals 19 to 64. And the eligibility is met solely by income. So there's no assets or resources or need to be disabled to apply for this program. You just have to meet the income standard. Uh, which was new back when this rolled out back in 2013, um, before it was very hard to get state-based insurance. Um, and now we have this option for adults. Uh, pregnancy, um, you see the requirements there. Um, for Washington State, we do not have the U.S. citizen um, or lawful permanent resident requirement for our pregnancy program. Um, if you do not meet those, the state still covers you. Um, and you get full coverage through delivery plus two months postpartum, and then you also get family planning. Um, the children's program goes through the child's 18th year. Um, again, must intend to reside in Washington State, uh, meet income requirements. Uh, again, for this program, immigration is also not a factor. Washington Apple Health for Children has both free and low cost monthly options. The children's program has a much higher income limit um, than the adult programs. And so children can be covered um, for households that have more income, but they may incur a small premium of either 20 or $30 a month per child as that income goes up. Um, so what we look for with Apple Health, income, residency, um, determine if you're eligible and with the exception of the low cost children's programs, Apple Health is free coverage. Um, if you income qualify for Apple Health and have employer sponsored insurance, you can still keep that insurance. Uh, and then most clients, again, who are over income for Apple Health qualify for a qualified health plan. So what do those qualified health plans look like? If a client is not eligible for Apple Health, we say this a lot, in most cases they can enroll with a qualified health plan through the Health Plan Finder. Most of the time you have to enroll during an open enrollment period, which is what we are in right now. This year open enrollment started November 1st and will go through January 15th of 2021. Um, last year it ended in December. We're going out a little farther this year so that people can learn about the new options, which we have so much more this year as far as the number of plans available and also Cascade Care. So we're giving folks a little extra time to enroll this year. Um, if you have a life-changing event, however, you can enroll during the year, usually within a 60-day period of that life change occurring. Um, we've had a couple exceptions to that this year due to the pandemic, but in general, if you're not in the open enrollment period, you must have a life-changing event during the year to enroll. These are things like getting married, getting divorced, having or adopting a child, uh, change of citizenship status, moving from another state or part of Washington state that causes you to lose your coverage. Those types of things can let you enroll outside of the open enroll enrollment period. Also losing your coverage through your employment. So if you lost your job, which caused you to lose insurance, you can also have that period to enroll. Again, most special enrollment periods are 60 days, 
from the event that occurred in your life to cause the change. When you enroll in a qualified health plan, you can reduce the cost of your premium by using a tax credit. And what that means is it's an amount of money that the IRS pays towards your monthly premium, and then you reconcile with them when you file your taxes the following year. So people who received a tax credit in the year 2020 would need to reconcile by filing their taxes and filing the appropriate forms when they file 2020 taxes in the calendar year 2021. Um, to receive that tax credit, you have to have a household income below 400% of the federal poverty level. And for example, a household of four, that limit is currently $8,733 gross per month. Um, anything below that you could, depending on the price of your plan, receive tax credit assistance to help pay your premium. Again, you must file your taxes for that calendar year you received tax credits and reconcile that you received the right amounts with the IRS. You, and you must not be eligible to enroll in employer-sponsored insurance. There are some exceptions due to affordability um, of the employer-sponsored plan. In most cases in Washington state, um, if you're eligible for an employer-sponsored plan, you're not eligible to receive a tax credit. And you cannot be on Medicare or Medicaid. So this tax credit helps you pay the monthly premium amount. However, if you are under 250% of the federal poverty level, if you choose the Silver Clause plan, or I'm sorry, the Silver plan, you will receive cost sharing assistance, which will also lower your out-of-pocket costs. This is your copay, deductible, and coinsurance. Um, so the price you pay when you actually see the doctor. Um, these cost sharing reductions, again, are available only when you choose a silver plan. The qualified health plans are shown as gold, silver, and bronze and metal levels. And basically what it is, is the gold standard is the lowest monthly, or sorry, the highest monthly premium, but the lowest deductible and out-of-pocket cost. Silver is in the middle, and then bronze is the lowest premium, but highest out-of-pocket cost. So by choosing a silver plan, if you are low income and under 250%, they give you additional reductions that help you pay less when you use your insurance. We'll cover that in a little more detail and I have a slide that will make that a little clearer coming up here shortly. Um, if you are Native American or Alaska Native and you have income under 300% of the poverty level, um, you have no cost sharing. So you can apply your tax credit to any plan you want, um, no matter the cost, and still not have to pay anything out of your pocket when you see a physician. Um, and at the bottom here, we just have some general descriptions of what we talk about when we say out-of-pocket costs. So a copay is when you pay a specific amount, like if you have a copay of $10 to see your primary care physician. Coinsurance is usually a percentage. We see this a lot with Medicare. Um, the older population, um, most Medicare pays 80-20, so it's that 20% that the, that the patient is paying the doctor. Um, same thing here with these plans when they give you a percentage co-insurance. Deductible is just like the deductible that you pay for your car insurance if you get in an accident and you have to pay your deductible to get your car repaired. It's the amount that you pay out of your own pocket before the insurance covers any of your services. And then there's the out-of-pocket maximum, which is the annual limit that you would have to pay in these costs to your physician, where at that point your insurance would pick up all of your out-of-pocket expenses so that you would owe nothing additional because you've reached those out-of-pocket amounts. All qualified health plans cover the basics set forth in the Affordable Care Act. No one is denied because of pre-existing conditions. So all the qualified health plans on the exchange include doctors, visits and hospital stays, maternity, pediatric, newborn care, prescription drugs, preventative screenings, management of chronic disease, mental health services, 
And in Washington State, COVID-19 testing and screening is covered um, and with mandate by by mandate of our insurance commissioner, um, you are not charged out of pocket for the screening and testing services for COVID-19. Um, so we've moved forward um, with covering that screening test here in Washington as the pandemic um, has hit our state. So now we're gonna take a look at the qualified health plans. Um, I just wanna take a pause here to see um, if anyone has, uh, let me see if I can look at the chat. Um, does anyone have any questions? Um, I see a couple. Um, will the slides be available after this? Um, yes, we will make, um, we can make the slides available for folks. Um, we can post them along with the, with the recording. Um, so, um, let's see, just check in for, okay. All right. Okay, so a couple new messages here. Sorry, I just wanted to check. Okay. All right. Okay, so someone wanted to, um, what was the amount again that I gave for 400% of the poverty line? The example that I gave was for a household of four. For a household of four, 400% um, out of pocket, or I'm sorry, tax credit maximum limit um, is currently at uh, 8733 and that's the monthly amount um, for um, gross income so it would be gross income before before taxes um, and I did not include a full income grid um, in the slide presentation um, but we can certainly um, we can certainly answer any questions and make and make that available for fo for folks as well um, and there are several places on our outreach site where you can see under our health insurance, the, um, the income limits for, for the different programs available to folks. Okay. All right, so the 2021 qualified health plans. So when we're talking about purchasing insurance on the exchange, there are some things um, that we are seeing in 2021. Um, so the major themes that are coming out with our new plans is um, lower price plans are available in most counties. Uh, there's not a huge reduction in price, but there is a, a trend that the prices are going down, which, which, is, which is still good. Um, so we are seeing lower prices. Um, we have more carriers and more plan options for consumers. Um, and we're offering Cascade Care, which offers standard plans and public off option offerings. Um, and that's new to um, the Health Plan Finder this year and new for coverage for the state of Washington. So the carriers, here's what our health plans look like. We are up to 13 carriers um, from seven last year. I think seven or eight last year. Um, so um, we are adding Community Health Network of Washington, Regents, and United Healthcare for 2021. Um, Regents and United Healthcare. Um, actually, all three of these had been in the exchange at least one year in the past um, and had opted out, and now they've come back. So I guess we're up from 10 to 13. Um, so all carriers have at least two options. Um, last year, we had eight counties that only had one carrier. Now all 39 counties in the state of Washington have at least two options. There is a total of 115 QHPs for 2021. Um, you see Eric King, Pierce, and Thurston. We'll see anywhere from 69 to 73. Um, in 2020, um, there were 43 QHP statewide, and the most that was offered in any county was 35. What that really means is we have 13 carriers and bronze, silver, and gold at the metal level tiers. When you add them all up, it comes out to, across the state, 115 different plan options, depending on how many carriers are in each county and how many of the gold, silver, and bronze they add in for each uh, 
for each county that they offer coverage in. So not everyone will be offered 150, 15 options. Not everyone in King County will have 69 or 73. Um, you may be offered fewer plans as you get as you get older, as far as gold, silver, and bronze. But you do have a lot to select from this year is the bottom line of that. Um, but no one will actually log in and see 115 plans pop up. So um, there is a lot of choice though that can make this a little bit more complicated for people looking at the exchange products, which is why we're here to help. The standard plans are what's available through Cascade Care. And these are available to all consumers looking for insurance in all counties. Um, the public option plan um, in Cascade Care, there's only five carriers and it's only in 19 counties. Um, public option would probably grow as we go forward um, because it's a new structure and some of the carriers are looking to see how it kind of uh, hands out with offering this public option before they decide to join because they have the option. Um, so, but I'm, sh I'm sure we'll see that change a little bit. Um, and as we go forward here in the presentation, we'll give a little more detail on Cascade Care so you'll understand those last two points a little better. All right, so here's a list of our plan carriers for this year. Um, so Bridge Band, Community Health Network, Coordinated Care, Kaiser has two products depending on where you live in Washington. Um, here were Kaiser Health Plan of Washington, um, Calitz, and I'm sorry, I forget the second county, are the Kaiser Northwest, um, LifeWise, Molina, Primera, Re and then the two new regents. Um, and United Healthcare, and I also listed our dental carriers here for you. Um, but these are the plans that you will see the insurance carriers through the exchange. Okay, so I keep mentioning this gold, silver, bronze. This is essentially our QHP structure and how it works. So when you go into the health plan finder and make an application, you will see the plans listed as uh, constant care silver is one. Um, Balance Care Silver, uh, Balance Care Bronze. Those are some of the names that our carriers give their, give their product. Uh, but the metal tiers are the essential structure where we have this bronze is the lowest premium but highest deductible. Silver tends to be the best value and has the cost sharing reductions uh, for folks less than 200% of the poverty line. And then the gold has the highest premiums but the lowest deductibles. And then how they determine the tax credit is they take the premium costs, or sorry, how they determine your, out, your monthly premium cost is they take the total premium minus the tax credits you're eligible for, and that equals the amount you pay. And again, the tax credits um, are determined by your affordability, which is looking at how much you earn and how much the second lowest cost silver plan is um, to come up with what they consider affordable for your household. And then that tax credit amount is subtracted from the premium price for the plans that you're offered. And that would determine how much you pay. So we're gonna talk a little bit about Cascade Care here. Um, so with Cascade Care, this is the new option for Washington State. What Washington State wanted to do is two things essentially is come up with a standard plan where people got more before their deductible um, so that you get more value out of your out of your coverage. Um, they are required this year from all carriers. Our carriers are offering a standard plan option and they are available in all counties. The second thing they wanted to do is offer a public option plan. Now the public option plan is essentially the same structure and out of pocket cost as a standard plan. However, um, with the public option, because what the carrier pays to the doctors is lower, you would generally see a lower premium. 
and that's basically how that works. But it's the same overall structure um, and same overall out-of-pocket costs as the regular standard plan. Um, and there are only five carriers that are offering these this year. Um, like I said, a lot of the carriers are trying to still discover how these plan option, this public option would work with their, with their uh, carriers and their provider networks. Um, most of the carriers that are offering the standard plans in Cascade Care are also offering what we call non-standard plans or the regular QHPs. So the things that you bought in 2020, um, the plan option, very similar, still or still available um, in 2021, along with the new standard plan options. Um, so the exchange auto renewals people, if you have an existing plan in 2020, if the plan is still available and all of your information is verifiable, they would just auto renew you, which is basically extending your coverage on that plan into the next calendar year. Um, so if they auto renewed you, they would be auto renewing you into a plan that is the regular QHPs that we see today for 2020, continuing into 2021. If you wanted to look at Cascade Care or shop for Cascade Care options to see if your price could be lowered and you would get a better value, you can still go in and shop even if you are auto renewed into your same plan for next year. Cascade Care plans are only sold on the exchange. This is an exchange level product and not offered on the open market. So what's the value of having these standard plans? What they do is they ensure that you have access to services before the deductible. So most of that includes primary care visits, uh, preventative care, urgent care, your mental health services, and generic drugs. Um, so you get all of those services just by paying your monthly premium and you do not have to meet your deductible first. A lot of these services are at copay level instead of coinsurance to provide transparency and predictability for costs for consumers. So instead of saying you owe 20% when you see your doctor, you may owe a $30 copay, which is a flat amount. And if you know you go to the doctor six times a year because you go every other month, you can estimate over your calendar year how much you will probably pay out of pocket to see your primary care physician. So they have structured this in a way so that you have a little more information in order to determine the amounts that you will likely be spending on your health care um, over the year. Um, these plans also provide bronze plans that have high value services before the deductible at the lower premium price that comes along with a bronze plan. And they also maximize the federal premium tax credits in the silver plan design because if you are under 250%, um, you will still see um, the lowered uh, out-of-pocket costs that are associated with the silver plan. They establish a strong foundation for this public option. The public option lowers the reimbursement rate that's paid out by the carriers, which lowers your premium. Um, so once the plans come up with a good method to predict their cost under the public option, we will see more public options being offered through the exchange. Uh, and so this allows you as a consumer to compare plans by network and premium because the out-of-pocket under standard plans is standardized. So you see that value across carriers. So this is what the standard plan looks like. Um, if, it's a, if it's a standard plan, when you see it under the Cascade Care logo, it will say Cascade. Um, and so there's thir all 13 carriers are offering these at each med metal level, gold, silver, and bronze. So what you see here is if you have a standard gold plan, the deductible is $500. The primary care premium is 15. Specialist visit is 40. If you see silver, you would see $2,000 deductible, um, $2,000 deductible, a urgent care visit of copay of $60, a um, 
primary care visit of $25 um, and so on. So what you see, and I hope this slide is big enough for everyone to see, if not, um, you know, when we post this, you can, you can get a better look. Um, what you see here is things that are shaded in blue. Um, all of those services are not subject to the deductible. So if you're looking at this, um, urgent care um, under gold, inpatient hospitalization, but that's gold only, but uh, primary care visits, um, specialty visits, mental health visits, um, things like speech and occupational therapy, um, preventative is at zero and that includes immunizations, labs and x-rays, that's a big one. Um, quite a few of the plans under the regular QHP, at least in 2020, saw a deductible being applied to either the lab or the x-ray, sometimes both. With the standard plans, neither of those services are subject to deductible. Um, and also generics and preferred brand drugs are not subject to the deductible um, for gold and silver. Um, so that's what you were seeing here. And that's where they're talking about the value added, where you see all of these services that are not subject to the deductible when you select a standard plan. Now our public option, which are listed as Cascade Select when you look at them in the health plan finder, um, they utilize the same design, gold, silver, bronze. They have to meet all the same QHP requirements um, and provider requirements. It's just that the reimbursement paid to the providers is tied to Medicare rates, which should lead to lower premiums. But as far as what you will see when you are searching for the plan as far as your coverage, you will see the same for the Cascade and the Cascade Select in the Health Plan Finder. So this is a little bit of a comparison chart for what we saw from the standard plan, the non-standard plans, or what those regular QHPs were, are for 2021 versus 2020. Um, this is an average, um, and, and it has a little bit of a range on the, de on the deductible prices that you can see here, um, but basically what you're seeing is if you look at a standard plan in 2021 and a non-standard plan in 2021, um, you see quite a bit of difference in the deductible. At silver level, it's $1,000. At bronze, it's $1,200. At gold, it is over nine, 900, and it's $950 less in your deductible if you choose a standard plan versus choosing that existing QHP plan. So this is how the Cascade Care Plans save you money because your out-of-pocket costs are lowered by the standardization of structure um, of how the plans work. Um, and so that's what they call that dollar first service. So you get service from your insurance company for the first dollar you pay in premium, you get service. I think this is probably a little better example for, for people on how this would work in reality. Um, I think pretty much everyone is aware of the cost in managing um, diabetes. Um, now the state of Washington did do one positive thing across the board this year was they have capped the daily copay price for for insulin. So for insulin starting in 2021, um, it's hundred dollars a day. Um, they cannot charge more than that. Um, there were some insulins on the market that were almost quadruple that um, for a daily dosage. So that's one thing that um, has come into this. Um, but you can see um, with the plans for 2021, if you're looking at the non-standard plan or the regular QHP that we saw in 2020, that's gonna continue into 2021 um, versus the standard plan option. So you're talking a premium difference of about 40 bucks, about 30, 32 bucks. So 32 bucks more a month for the regular traditional plan versus the standard plan. But then you see a decrease of $1,500 in the deductible. So the standard plan deductible is $1,500 less for the calendar year. 
Um, if you have five primary care visits, the primary care copays are coming out about the same. Uh, your labs services are a little less, um, not quite half, but um, probably about 35% there you're saving um, with the standard plan. Um, the glucagon kit is a little more expensive on the standard plan. Um, your brand name insulin under the standard plan is uh, quite a bit, about $100 lower per calendar year. Um, and your testing strips are coming out about the same. So your out-of-pocket costs with the new standard plan are still coming out about 60, so, 60 or so dollars cheaper when you choose the standard plan. Um, plus you are saving yourself about $32 a month and premium costs. So you're saving on both premium and out of pocket in this example. Now, the thing about this example is this is a, also an average. Um, this, this example is based on the averages um, across the board that we see for this type of service. So depending upon your age and your needs um, for some of the services like how often you test um, and, and which insulin you're actually on, some of this may actually be lower, some of it may actually be a little bit more because this is based on, on the average consumer cost. So open enrollment is started on Sunday, yesterday, November 1st. If you choose between November 1st and December 1st, 15th, your coverage will begin January 1st. And open enrollment does not end this year until January 15th. Like I said, we're giving folks a little more time um, to look through these plans and explore their options and see what coverage works the best for them. This is our access and outreach team at our Chinook building, downtown Seattle and our Federal Way storefront offices. You see we have outreach staff um, that speak multiple languages and are available to help you um, enroll in coverage. Um, you can see our website there at the top, um, which you can schedule an online appointment through our portal. You can get information about not just the health insurance programs, but the other programs that we assist the community with enrolling in eligibility. Um, our community health access program line, um, you can call us Monday through Friday. Um, we're here to answer the phones, help you enroll and answer questions. Uh, we also have a team of clinic-based staff that are available at our public health locations. Um, and we've also made their locations and numbers available for you um, if you wanna call and get assistance at one of our health clinics. So we are now open for any more questions um, that you would like to ask. Anything you'd like me to hit again, I'd be happy to. So does any, anyone have any questions or would like to, um, we have the ability to um, put you in a breakout room with a navigator if you would like any assistance or would like to ask any one-on-one -on -one questions, um, we can do that as well. I have a question. Yes. So what's the big difference uh, between the last year and this year, like 2021 and 2020? The, the, biggest, the biggest difference is the number of plans that are available. Um, by having the additional carriers plus the standard plan options through Cascade Care, last year, if we did an application for someone, we got to the end of the application, it would show us about 30 to 35 plans. Um, some younger folks were, would be a few more because they would be offered like a catastrophic option, which isn't offered for 2021. But 
um, you would see maybe 30, 35 options between the, there were seven carriers in, in King County. Um, this year, when you go in with all the new additions, you will see somewhere between 68 to 72 or 73 different plans available for you that you would need to search. Um, you can narrow the search with um, the Smart Plan Finder tool. There's a tool where you can list your doctors and prescriptions and it would show you um, who was in network or if that prescription was, was covered under the formulary available. So you can narrow that search, but it's still showing you a lot more plan options to search through this year than, you, than you've had in the past couple years. And just to add to is that what's really new this year is, you know, traditional insurance, health insurance has always been, you had an annual deductible, unless, unless you get preventative health care, preventative health care, like your annual physical, your mammograms, colonoscopy, that's considered preventative and you don't have to pay a cost for that. You pay your monthly premiums. Then what happens is your other services that you need, you wouldn't get those until you met your deductible. So the really nice thing is, as Callista beautifully laid it out, is that now with the standard plans, you get a lot of more benefits before you have to reach your deductible, which is great. So even if you decided that I'm going to choose a high deductible, I'm going to choose a $2,000 deductible, I'm going to choose it. But what I know is, one, uh, choosing a $2,000 deductible may lower my cost. I have to pay every month. But it also tells me that I'm going to get my preventative health care. I don't have to pay anything. No co-pays, no co-insurance, none of that. I'm gonna, I can go get my flu shot. I can go get my annual physical. But what I also know with the standard plan is, I also know that I can go get labs and I don't have to meet my deductible. It could be that a lab copay now is only $25. You don't have to meet your deductible. Let's say you got sick. Being sick is not preventative. So you get sick, you normally have to meet your deductible before your insurance will cover it. But now you get these illness visits and all you have to pay is an office copay. So that is kind of the really cool thing about this open enrollment is you're going to get a lot of more benefits before you have to meet your deductible. And Chris, I think we have some questions in the chat. Um, yeah, I just answered for, for one. Um, I, will, I will go ahead and add our current income chart to the end of, to the, end of the presentation when we post it. And we really would welcome any of you all that want to get insurance tonight or you want to at least know your options. We do have several trained, smart, really articulate navigators that are on the phone now and they can help you understand your options. And Callista can, what we can do is that if you want to stay on the line, we will actually put you in a breakout room with one of the navigators and they can help you look at your options. So if you do want to, um, know your health insurance options. If there's no other questions and you do want to know your health insurance options, please put a note in the chat and we can get you transferred into the navigator. You know, otherwise what we're going to do is there's several links. Thank you, Liz. There's some links on in the chat box that tell you where you can go if you want to know the income charts for tax credits. Um, and then you also have in here our number if you want to call us. Um, but we love it if you want to be transferred into a navigator, we we'll, can go ahead and get you over to a navigator. And I see some popping up. So Calista will be working on that right now to get you guys transferred over to a navigator. And if you guys have any other questions that were not answered, you don't feel comfortable in asking them, um, you can always email us. I had sent in a previous chat message, I had put some, some individuals' email addresses um, in, in the box, and you are more than welcome to email us, and we're happy to answer those questions. And when you get, the, if you want the PowerPoint presentation, it will post on our website, keycounty.gov backslash coverage. But our webmaster is a little backed up right now, so it may take a few days to get the actual PowerPoint presentation. So we are more than happy to send it out to you individually. I've, so the emails that we've included in the chat, if you want to email one of us, we'd be happy to send that PowerPoint out individually.
we want to thank you guys for taking the time. I know there's other things you could have been doing tonight other than listening to a presentation about health insurance. We really want to thank you guys so much for listening to it. And we're now going to work to get people over um, into the, with the navigator. Thank you so much. So um, we actually have one more question that just popped up that we should answer for the group. Um, it says uh, Medicaid slash Apple Health is just one plan, correct? Not, uh, um, excuse me, not a lot of choices like the qualified health plans. Um, actually with um, the Washington State a Apple Health Program, we have managed care and there are five managed care companies to choose from. So it's one plan where you have the same coverage. There's no uh, premiums or out-of-pocket cost except for the high, higher income children's programs with those small premiums. But for the adults and most children, it is free. Um, and you choose one of the five health plans. Um, so this is Amerigroup, uh, Coordinated Care, Molina, Community Health Plan of Washington, uh, and United Healthcare. You choose one of those five plans and they manage your benefit. So you use their network of providers, their pharmacy services, mental health services are, are all coordinated by the managed care plan. So while in and of itself, it's the same coverage in all one program, you do still have the choices of making the carrier or choosing the carrier that's right for you for your for your family when it comes to the Apple Health program. 